Hey, what's up, Lee Ron here. Today I want to share with you a relatively simple way of painting a boat, but in a way that's interesting and beautiful and makes a lot of use of interesting colors and combinations, a few subtle ones, a few more punchy ones. Uh, this is based on a recent live stream I actually did, but I cut out all the fluff and it's just the process itself. I want to thank you so much for your patience as I am on vacation currently in Vietnam. Uh, so I've been preparing these in advance for you. But in any case, without further ado, let's get to it. So round, I'm going to completely remove that dog I don't care about it at all. Um, so boat starts somewhere around here um, and it will end somewhere around here so that I have some kind of a, an, an envelope to work with. And then for the lowest part of the boat where the shadow is going to be, it's going to be somewhere around here. Close to the edge, you can see it's close to this edge, this edge. Um, that's the bottom of the shadow. Now we'll find some kind of a center point, so that'll be something like that. And I'll zoom in on my reference now. Yeah, thank you, Hillel. Sorry about that. That that was annoying. I think it's because my um, uh, I changed my camera to a 4K setting. I think that's what's causing the delay. Uh, and I don't stream in 4K anyway, so it doesn't matter. So it's just a silly thing. Um, I'll be ready for next time. I'll change the settings so that it's not on 4K. It will probably solve it because I think that's what caused it. Um, so usually that's how these things are solved, honestly. Um, now, I wanted to show you the drawing process on purpose. So um, you'll have to bear with me. Um, there we go. Okay, now I see everything properly. So, we have this top line. Now this starts almost flat. And then it curves up. So we get this kind of a structure. I hope you can see my pencil lines. It looks like they are quite visible, so that's fine. Uh, and then from here... I'm going to drop a line over down to there. This is going to just mimic what's going on only in the reflection. And then, of course, we have the actual um, other side of the boat. It's going to be very flat, like so. And we're going to obviously see some of the inside, but not too much, actually. So we'll have it like that. Uh, horizon, I do see some, you know, mountains, we'll figure that thing out, something like so. We'll start, so this is what we'll do, we'll start with red, then we'll go a bit yellow, gray, blue, okay? Uh, I think that'll be a good way to start this. Now let's add just a few more details to the drawing, so that I have something more to rely on. My feeling that this should go a little lower, maybe down to here. We're going to have a dark section close to the base. That's a very common thing. We're going to have some uh, ripples here. We'll figure that out in the next washes. And then we'll have some of the rope going through here. Not like that. Not and just falling into the water. And I think we're good. I'm just gonna hold it like that because I really want to be able to play around with the angle. Now we'll add a bit of yellow and a tiny bit of blue because we do need to keep this somewhat under our control. I'm gonna need more paints probably. If I really want to rely just on this mix, I'm going to need a bit more paint. Sorry, my chair is squeaking. I hope that's not too distracting. And we're ready to go. So I'm actually going to start with a bit of yellow here. I now see there's a bit of that, a hint. And... We'll try getting a relatively smooth wash here. 
as smooth as we can. The way I do this is by not, um, pretty much not varying the, the wash too much here. Uh, now as we get to this point, I'm gonna go back to some of our yellow, some water, still careful. Because if now we're coming back with too much wetness, uh, we may end up with a mess on our hands, so we don't want that. So you just take your time, but you keep feeding the wash in hopes to create a smooth one. Now, as we get down to here, I'm gonna continue with the yellow around the center, because that part of the boat really is kind of a nice golden yellow. Well, later on add the blue, so I'm not too worried about that, but I am worried about the water. The water needs to start becoming a little more blended, a little more towards the gray. So the way to achieve this is to create an orange, add a bit of blue, and start really graying this out ever so slightly, okay? And we're gonna continue to push the wash down. And as we push it lower and lower, we're gonna feed it with a bit more blue. Just a bit more blue. Until the blue becomes really dominant in the mix. Sorry, couldn't talk, had to feed the left side of that shadow. I'm actually gonna paint a very similar scene. I'm gonna add a bit of phthalo there, just for variety's sake. I'm actually gonna paint a very similar scene uh, in one of next week's videos. You'll see a similar process. I actually shared it on Instagram. And the paint here is quite strong, so it takes a few tries to really, you know, cover all the gaps. I'm going to make use of this still bit of wet wash to strengthen the bottom a bit. Because I'm using quite a thick paint there, I can do that. I'm not trying to create ripples, per se. Just trying to darken some of the bottom. And we will probably let this dry. Uh, so I think I'll aim for that kind of a blue inside. That's the one that um, I think I have the best, kind of closest uh, version of. Now, I'm using quite a strong color here, clean and strong blue, because I'm painting over yellow. So I want to make sure the blue totally overpowers the layer underneath. And let's see what it ends up looking like. Okay, I may be wrong there, but we'll see. Now, let's actually close this gap off. It's gonna be just like that. Now look at what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna flip it and mix a kind of darker. I'm gonna also flip the photo on my monitor. Just using some neutral tint because I want to start feeding it a darker black, but I don't want it to move too much up there. So I'm flipping, that's how I do it. Um, we also have a thin highlight there, so I'm just gonna kind of follow my instinct, see what happens. That's usually what serves, serves me the best in these kinds of processes. Keeping the angle a little like that. I really want the, the dark paint to stay low. And then I am going to strategically close this gap in a few, again, select locations. 
with a bit of an orangey kind of warm color. It can be quite strong because we're working um, real close to a you know black color. Let's see what happens. I'm just going to place the paint in. We'll see if it uh, provides the feel we're after. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Um, but if you take something from it, you see me reversing, you know, rotating the painting, that can really help. Uh, now, sometimes you'll get something that doesn't look exactly the same, but it looks good. Um, that's honestly the best thing I can ask for. Um, and it's still just a little bit wet, so I'm going to use this opportunity to straighten out some lines and feed it once again with a very dark black color. Still not flipping this because I actually see a bit of a um, shadow right here behind. We can define that as well. We'll probably stop here for now. The rest is going to be the lower part of the wash. I'm curious to see what it looks like but I don't want to flip it so we can do this. Still keep it at its angle uh, in down. And we got this nice little effect. The rest we're going to bridge with the next wash. So now, in thinking how to approach this next wash, I'm going to try something out. We'll see how it will work. So I'm going to very cleanly apply some paint here over the entire ledge, actually. I need this color to be bright and not too dark and have plenty of water in it probably. I'll show you what the purpose is. Something like this. That gives me plenty of time to work. Now I can grab, let's tilt it this way. I'll try and see if I can get this edge still to be painted independently somewhat. Like so. Now we'll go back to our warm ish mix. Switch to a larger brush. We'll use the red as an in-between to go more towards the clean or blue, kind of like that. We're going to complete the dark ledge in a second, I'm not too worried about it now actually. Just want to get something in there that works. And ideally, I would like to get a clean blue by the time we get to the right side of the boat. It was a bit of a confused wash. That's fine. Now, as we reach the bottom, I'm going to darken once again with that kind of a warm, burnt kind of black color. Here, I'm going to add a bit of phthalo. Yeah, I'll have to figure out how to approach the next stages of this wash. Um, it'll be a bit of a challenge, I feel like. But we'll see. That was a very confused wash. I didn't... Uh, didn't paint it the way I would ideally want to, but that's fine. This is such a strong contrast, like when I filmed the video, and you'll see it's a very similar subject. But it was so much easier when all I have to do is just paint from, like, I can look at the painting from an inch away um, and just paint in complete silence. Such a different experience. 
I don't know why, I feel like it becomes more challenging for me to narrate as I think. So that side's going to be a little darker. And then, so this should be lighter. Now I, I, I'm totally going to ruin it. Worst case, we'll paint another one. Um, but what happens if I'll just, we'll do a, what you call a Hail Mary and just go over it. Try and lighten it up a bit. Let's see what will happen. Because I, I didn't want to go as dark. I wanted to start with fresh wash, but the top confused me. That was a really annoying wash. I may have, have to do another version. Yeah, there's no escaping it now. Nah. May have to just paint another one here on the other side. <laughs> we'll see about that. Uh, I may just do the boat and that's it. We'll let it dry for now. I have, I have such a clean vision. Like I can show you here a la prima what I would, would have planned on doing. And it would be so easy to show you, but when it's a part of a big wash, it's so so different in a way. Let's do like a fun side experiment. I wanna I wanna test some things out. Sorry, I'm keeping a little quiet there. Just have to focus for this bit. And then, as I move here, I'll start adding more of that blue, but gradually. So that's more of the vision of, of course, it's messy, right? But that's more of the, closer to the vision I had in mind when I pictured this first wash. And then if we combine it with the shadow underneath, like so, that dark shadow will allow us um, some more time to plan out the next wash. I can even already feed this part with a bit of a shadow. I can even do this if I want to. Um, even get the, the ropes here pretty much in the same go. And then probably I can even start layering the French ultramarine underneath on this side. And of course the water's not here. So this is sometimes what I'll do if I feel like the, the painting did not allow me to fully figure it out. I'll do a separate almost example for myself. Um, you'll see the other, the, the video I filmed for, for the, for YouTube as well. You'll see it. It's a very similar subject. Um, and I handled it there exactly how I wanted. You might have seen the post on Instagram again. A uh, bit of clean yellow here. But yeah, that's more of how I would um, envision that. that wash and then we can wrap it up with uh, this kind of uh, I would even add a bit of blue to that I don't know why this wash confuses me so much now I can even continue just the blue above it and it will put it in a really nice balance I can I can already tell if I just do this bit right here will make even more sense you know of course my proportions are a little off but you get the point a lot of it is so um abstract in its nature in some ways you know so you'll get something like this maybe even with the, some of the darker areas inside it other area you know um you can add a background to that we can do that later on just for fun yeah, that makes sense. It's a super great. Let me show you. I was seeing it pretty accurately, actually. So if I grab all of this blue, it's quite close, but I need a bit more red. 
bit yellow. I'm gonna add some carbazol violet. We'll make mixing easier. And a bit of blue. Yeah, that's close. So the color I'm seeing is this exact thing here for the background. So I'm just gonna place that in. Uh, we'll see how it works out. Of course, I'm glazing it over a different color. So a lot of it will depend. Don't worry, I'm gonna straighten down, down the lower kind of section. Let me take this out, get the darks there behind. And I love that they travel up due to the wetness. We'll try and make something out of this one. We'll see where it goes. The thing that, like, I don't care if I don't really have a plan. But the thing is, I had such a clean plan in mind and still I wasn't really able to, you know, execute it the way I wanted to. Yeah. And now... We'll go even darker just for a second where we truly want, because I see some foliage, I see some interesting details, so we can place those where you really want to confirm that it's going to stay um, and not dissipate mainly. There we go. I think this should hold on quite nicely, and then we'll probably flip it around and put the a uh, nice little reflection there. It's kind of reaching all the way down to here, but it stops a little before it doesn't touch the edge of land. So that's going to be an interesting effect. Maybe I'll be able to get away with doing it this way. Who knows? I'm trying to just leave a sliver of a highlight here manually. No wet and wet, no nothing. Kind of darkening it as I go along. Bit of a strange way to do it. We'll see how it goes. Um, then other side will stick to an orange, I think. And the black. Let's see what happens. Actually, let's try it out this way.
just to mention, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just going with whatever. But hopefully that creates at least a bit of a better separation there. Um, you know, I just don't feel like I was able to bring out the impression I was after. That's the thing that bugs me. I was sure I had a much cleaner impression of this. It turns out I didn't. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, that's the thing that annoys me a bit. I don't, it's not like a failure or anything. Um, it's more about a failed experiment. <laughs> One single experiment, it's kind of failed, but that's fine. Um, feels a little you know, like an inch closer to what I kind of imagined, but still not quite there. Let's see now. So this goes here. There's a knot. There's this part there. And then as it gets to the water, we're going to start getting these little ripples right here. That I should have gotten in the bottom of the boat too. That's fine. There's a little bit of a ripply impression there. Let me try and enhance some of it. And then maybe let's do the part that disappears. So that if anything, the ripples look like ripples. I actually quite like the way they turned out at least. See, this little separate part here uh, does a lot of heavy lifting, let's just say. We can do maybe one more here, kind of like that. There we go. Um, then make it a little lighter just to have a bit on this side. No, that's way too light. What am I? What am I thinking? <laughs> that's not even gonna be visible. You need it to be a little lighter, but not as light. There we go. Yeah, I'll let that go. Um, okay, so a step closer. Um, I'm gonna try and get some clean water here. Clean water from the well. So, because we have a smooth up top here, uh, I'm going to start with clean water so that I have some um, distance to run with with a soft transition, you'll see here. So I pre-wet and then I bring in that kind of a gray mix that has essentially everything, all the colors we've been uh, using so far. So that we get a smooth transition on one end and then we can continue with what we've got here close to the shoreline but not touching it fully. So, I completely lost the feeling of whether I'm vertical or uh, horizontal properly or not, but that's fine. Uh, that line you will, you may want to smoothen out a bit more. Let's see if I can get away with, yeah, I can do that. There we go. And then, while it's still a little wet, I'm going to pour in some of these very obvious um, specific reflections. See, for some of the taller details, trees, these are really visible. You can do that also in these kinds of placements where it just feels a little darker, you know. And that will hopefully read as a proper reflection. Once we flip it over, then we'll know, you know. Till then, we're in the dark, lost at sea. Uh, but we'll give it a few seconds to dry. Now would be not a good time to flip it. Uh, this did uh, leave a bit of a mark, that's my bad. Uh, I could have um, um, done the pre-wetting a little better, uh, but that's fine. 
could have started a little higher and I, I used a lot of water so it did uh, awaken some of the wash but that's fine it's not gonna be that visible um, in the grand scheme of things and we'll start getting this kind of a dirty brown color for the letters let's see what these end up looking like I don't even know what it says, maybe lavage, I don't know, I'll try. It's part, probably a part of a word that we're not seeing fully. Now, the only real reason why I even want to include this text, so let's speak strategically, is so that I can show its reflection in the water. That's my main, uh, it's gonna be the main use for this text that I would have probably changed otherwise. Something like this. Now, sometimes I like to do that, make it look a little dirty, rusty. Sometimes it'll be too much, so we have to bring some of it back. I kind of exaggerated there. Let's bring more red. You could go with an extreme and actually use a much darker red than it actually is. It will still look fine. Let's do something like this. And then we can do the exact same thing in the water, only more ripple-y. A little more muted, I would say. something like this just to hint at it um yeah then i think we're good i don't know if i want to include that dark i'll probably nah we'll leave it like that see here's another one colors are a little more clean a little more independent actually let's try this is gonna be fun let's add the water around this uh, we'll almost imagine like we already have the boat we're just adding the water uh, we don't have much room around it, funny enough, but I'll, ju I'll just go with what we have and we'll see what we get. Um, so, first this kind of a neutral. Kind of warm. Let's add a bit of warmth up top. And as we move down, start bluing it up. It's interesting how sometimes when you add a background to a finished, um, finished subject, it almost can make sense. Now it's very uh, light. I'm actually going to lighten it a bit, but keep it clean those kinds of fun uh, experiments you can do as a break from a, a serious painting especially if it gave you some uh, trouble you know and just see what it looks like at the end you can also just go ahead and cover the shadow if you want to get some flow there um, and if the shadow needs to or reflection needs to be darker anyway so you'll do something like this you know just makes it look more like water there you have it so we have two weird uh examples but completely different you know uh approaches or processes um this one that we put a little more time into looks a little more of course uh, nuanced and subtle but the colors here so i was aiming for something cl more clean like this uh, that i kind of lost here you see a bit of blue coolness um around let's see if i can add a bit of it here around here and darken it a bit hmm. just felt like there was a bit of that there and then smoothen it out a bit you can do a few very uh, fun gimmicky things or not so gimmicky um, 
by adding these some of these uh, highlights. So for example, we have the ropes here going over the boat. You can do this kind of a thing. Um, rub off some of the white to keep it light. Um, same goes here in the reflection. See something like that. To show where the, and this will actually read quite well. Same goes for this here, it wraps around the edge. So you'll do something like this, right? And again, you can take some of it out and then you can also uh, come back with some dark paint. That's something I'll often do and justify the highlight. So you'll go right next to it. You'll just add a bit of a shadow. Oops, went over it a bit. You get the point. Just to justify it. If I lost too much of it, I can bring it back like so. Um, yeah, I don't see too much of that going on, just a bit. Um, there's the reflection here too, of course. Something like that. It will read really well and it will look like... Um, you know. Oh, and one more thing you could do is add some lights here in the background. This is something th something I show in the YouTube video. You'll see it. I'm using John Brilliant and not my white gel pen, but just to kind of speed things up a bit. Uh, you can create the impression. You know, it's a it's a town or a city, and that was a, a big part of what. If you saw my Instagram post, that was a big part of what made me even want to paint this scene to begin with. Um, I really like that. Um, it felt like you know where doing a, a little cruise on the water and it's a very quiet and nice peaceful time you see the town in the background uh but yeah this is pretty much what i have in terms of the process the water could be darker now that i'm seeing it of course if i'm going to compare it side by side like that i'm going to find tons of uh, problems it's hard to describe how much cleaner the paintings look in real life it's always the case i don't know why so thank you so so much for watching i really do appreciate it don't forget to leave a like if you like this video, leave a comment, let me know your thoughts, if you have any questions, if something was unclear, if you're still struggling with certain aspects of painting boats, I would love to hear that. Also check out the Frustration Free Watercolor course, very similar approach I take there. Uh, it will just allow, allow you more freedom, will set you free in your watercolor journey. I do wanna take this opportunity to thank everyone who supports me over on Patreon. Uh, you are, huge for what I'm doing. You allow me to uh, do this with more confidence. You know, there's a lot of instability in, in making your own business and doing that kind of a thing. And I'm very proud to be mostly reliant on your support, whether it's getting a course or supporting via Patreon, uh, as many of you are. So thank you so, so much. And I will talk to you again in the next vid. Take care. Keep painting. We'll talk again soon.